Hey guys, it's Kat D, and I'm here with a graphic novel review. Hey guys, and welcome to my very first graphic novel review, so please bear with me. Uh, if I don't tell you something that you wanted to know, or if I go into too much detail or not enough detail, I can't make everybody happy, but literally my problem is going to be trying to review this graphic novel without giving every damn thing away. So, for the first graphic novel review, I decided to do something that I absolutely love. So I reread, just so I could do this, and I was like, it was fresh on my brain. Uh, Neil Gaiman's uh, Preludes and Nocturnes, and this is a 12 volume series, it's the Sandman series, and I actually have not read all 12, I've only read 4. Can you believe that? Like, I, I could read this first one a million times, like, I loved it that much. Um, so, uh, the premise of this book is literally about the Sandman, or Morpheus, the King of Dreams, and it right off the bat starts in a very ominous tone um you know it starts with see I'm, i don't want to give too much away it really it starts with at the very beginning a book is given to someone who does a ritual and they're trying to uh do a ritual so no one will ever die i mean they, they want to like literally cheat death well, something goes wrong and that doesn't exactly happen, and when they perform this, every, uh, people all around the world fall asleep. Not everybody, but there are people all around that fall asleep from all different places. Um, some have nightmares and some are just sleeping. Um, and uh, also this entity or this person that you don't know is a person or you don't know yet, um, is also came through when they did this ritual and they think they failed and all they have to show for what happened are these random people that have fallen asleep that like it's just random I feel like it goes to like maybe eight or nine people maybe it's less than that I can't really remember off the bat I remember four people specifically because there's a reason I'm not going to tell you why um, and uh, than this other entity. Well, this other entity is actually, I'm, I mean, it's Morpheus, the Sandman. He comes through, so obviously they were trying to bring death, uh, so they could cheat death, but they got Sandman. So, um, and there's actually a, a, like, a thing to that that I can't actually tell you. Um, cause it would be, it would be spoiling it, and I'm trying to do a spoil a free review, so, uh, so Morpheus, time goes by and eventually uh, they have him like in this bubble. It looks like he's just laying there and then time goes by and then eventually he's like, okay, it's time. And he gets up and then he, I don't, lots of time has passed because the people that were falling asleep are now starting to wake up when he does this. So, um, then it actually gets going and the graphic novel really gets... Uh, gritty and just I could not put it down it, it gets really amazing so the whole premise of this book is kind of Morpheus or the Sandman uh, the King of Dreams kind of getting back to where he was at one point because apparently he was in this realm at one time and then somehow he got cast away and now he's back so um, throughout this graphic novel he's actually searching for three of his items he's going to be searching for his bag of sand because he is the Sandman and he searches for his helmet and he searches for a ruby and throughout that the travels of him searching for these items you meet other people that you might be familiar with along the way like John Constantine um, and it is just really gripping uh, and how he has to go about getting these items um, it's like three different stories like in one that encompasses what is the Sandman and I'm sure if this came out in comic book form at one time I'm sure it usually does usually graphic novels like this you have like comics that come out and then they turn it into graphic novel form um, or vice versa um, I actually don't even know if this is a comic book but it's just a graphic novel so um, yeah so he goes through he's trying to find all these items to get back to his status as 
the king of dreams and he needs all of these items to do what he can do and literally he controls dreams and nightmares he can make you dream beautifully or i'm sure that he could use his power to make you like scream and stay in this nightmare for however long that he felt like you needed to be in it um he's really not he doesn't come across as a villain per se in this book um and I can't explain really why uh, you feel like you want him to succeed throughout the book, throughout this graphic novel. Um, because there are other things that are even more evil than him that are trying to use the items that he is trying to, to, get, to gain back, specifically the ruby. Um, and the ruby section of it where he's trying to get his ruby back and what happens with that ruby is probably one of the best parts in this book for me. Um, I'm not going to tell you exactly what happens, but this ruby manipulates this person and turns it into what is even not a person, and, you know, some really horrific, terrible things happen, and I absolutely love it. Um, if you are into Neil Gaiman, uh, I mean, if you've, I mean, if you're into, if you've, into Coraline, or if you've read the Graveyard Book, or if you like things that are genuinely, like, I don't want to even say it's horror, but it deals with death, and it deals with, um, you know, time, you know, like reality and time. Um, I think you would really love Neil Gaiman's work. He is a fantastic author, and I would read anything by him. Um, the Sandman is definitely what turned me on to Neil Gaiman, and Coraline, obviously, because I love Coraline. Um... And, yeah, so I hope I did it justice in kind of reviewing it. I'll tell you how I feel about it now. Obviously, I give this a 10 out of 10. It kept me on the edge of my seat every step of the way. I wanted to follow Morpheus throughout this entire book, and I wanted to follow other the all the other characters that you find within the book that are revolving around this entire story. I wanted to follow them as well. There was nothing in this particular graphic novel that I did not like. Um, there are some graphic novels that you read that, you know, you get really into it, and then it shows another point of view or another POV, and... Um, you're like, no, no, I want to go back to that because this part of the story is really boring. That does not happen. Um, although you see other things going on, you want to know everything about it. I wish, I'm glad that it's a 12-part series. I'm going to read every single one of them. Um, but graphic novels, huh. Um, I tend to, I don't know, I read one and then I want to read something else. And if you guys don't see behind me, I just... I have so many things I can't even I can't even prioritize what I'm gonna read so yes pick this up let me know what you think if you've already read it let me know what you think let me know if there's something that you felt like I should have given the information about that maybe I didn't remember be kind this is my first graphic novel review and I'm trying not to spoil anything but I want to give you guys enough so you know how fabulous this book is um, and you know what like the purpose of this particular novel is. Um, and at the very end of this graphic novel, you meet someone else that's very interesting. You meet his sister. I'm not going to tell you who that is. It's cool. Um, which is actually, if you know anything about this, is actually already a spin-off graphic novel. So, yeah, I'm Cat D, guys. Let me know what you thought. I loved it. Um, dark, creepy, fabulous goodness. All right.